Hi everyone! In this video we're going to solve this differential equation subject to the in indicated, here it is, initial condition. So in other words, we're going to solve the initial value problem or IVP. I'm going to write it down just in case you're more familiar with this name. Okay, what kind of equation are we looking at here? Well, that is a first order linear differential equation. It's first order because the highest derivative is the first derivative and it's linear because it satisfies the two conditions. y and its derivative are raised to the first power and all the coefficients are functions of x. So coefficient here is x plus 1 function of x and coefficient of y is just a constant. So um, now um, first what we're going to do, we're going to find its general solution, right? Remember that's the process for solving the IVP initial value problem. First find the general solution and then using the given condition we're going to find the particular solution that satisfies that condition. So one specific function that satisfies this. Like what exactly is this? Well one specific function such that when x equals 1 for that function y equals 10. So let's perform the steps for solving first order linear differential equation. Remember in the first step we have to put this equation in standard form. That is the, um, when there is no coefficient in front of dy dx. So we need to divide every term by x plus 1. So this is going to be the standard form dy dx plus um, I'm going to write this as 1 over x plus 1 times y, so that coefficient of y is more obvious, and then the right hand side is ln of x over x plus 1. Okay, very good. Now in the next step we need to find the integrating factor. So to find integrating factor we first need to identify p of x, and that is the coefficient of y when equation is written in standard form. So that is standard form. That's what we call p of a uh, of x, uppercase p of x. Now integrating factor. We take e and raise it to the power that is integral of p of x, so integral of 1 over x plus 1 dx in our case. Now let's simplify this integrating factor by integrating the power. So this time the integration is pretty easy, right? So antiderivative of 1 over x plus 1 is just a ln of absolute value of x plus 1, like that. And at this point I would want to drop the absolute value. When I do that I have to make a node. So I drop the absolute value, now this is just parentheses. I have to make a node that x plus 1 has to be greater than 0, right? Whatever is inside the logarithm always has, always has to be positive. Um, well, which means that x has to be greater than negative 1. Technically, for this particular problem, well, we write it just to be mathematically correct, but since it's the initial value problem, since we have this initial condition, we can see how the given value of x in the initial condition um, does fit the domain of this logarithm, um, as well as the one that's um, in the equation itself. So we're good, but we just you know, keep it for the record. And then one more step here, we can simplify it even further. Remember the property of logarithms, if something is raised to the power that is logarithm with the same base as what we raised to the power. So basically e is being raised to the power ln logarithm with base e of x plus 1. That's where we can drop e and logarithm and just be left with x plus 1. So that is property of logarithms. This is our integrating factor, so we took all those steps and we ended up with just x plus 1 as the integrating factor. Next step. In the next step, step 3, we need to multiply each term of the given equation by the integrating factor. Well, that's, that's why it's called factor. So, that's what I'll have. x plus 1 d 
dy dx plus x plus 1 times 1 over x plus 1y. I'm going to write it all down even though, you know, we probably could skip this step and simplify things um, a little bit quicker. ln of x over x plus 1 times x plus 1. So I'm going to underline these are the integrating factors, right? And yeah, let's simplify. Now we'll have x plus 1 dy dx plus here x plus 1 and x plus 1 cancel, so it's just y, right? And on the right hand side, x plus 1 and x plus 1 cancel, so that is just ln of x, like that. Okay, very good. Um, now, step 4. In step 4, we're going to rewrite the left hand side as follows. It's derivative d dx of the product of the integrating factor x plus 1 and y. So that's always integrating factor times y. At this point, double check if that looks right. Let's apply the product rule um, here. Der um, so I'm going to take the first term and multiply by the derivative of the second term. Well, here it is, first term times derivative of the second term. And now, derivative of the first term, derivative of x plus 1 is just 1 times the second term. Here it is, 1 times y is y. So yeah, that looks right. We can absolutely write, it, write the left-hand side this way. And then the right-hand side is ln of x, like that. So that's step four. And now step five, we're gonna, I'm gonna put five here, but I'll make notes in this line. Um, in step five, we're gonna integrate both sides of the equation. Now, integrating left-hand side, when we follow this method, it's always very easy because integral or antiderivative and derivative cancel each other out. And we just have x plus one y. Now the right hand side, we um, sometimes have to do some work on the side. And that's actually the case here. It looks simple. Oh, I have to write dx as well. dx. It looks very simple, right? Antiderivative of, of ln of x. But if you remember, there is no antiderivative. Well, it's not a basic uh, form of an integral. So you will not find it like in the basic integral table. Uh, we have to be, you know, kind of creative when we integrate a LAN, um, natural logarithm. And the way we integrate it is by using the uh, integration by parts method. So I'm going to do the work on the side. So I made some space here. So I need to integrate a LAN of x dx. So remember the method is by rewriting ln of x as the product, well, product of 1 and ln of x. We can totally do that, right? Product of 1 and ln of x dx. And now we're going to apply integration by parts. So we need to identify u and dv. Well, since we cannot find um, antiderivative of, of ln of x, we have no choice but to say that u is ln of x, right? Because then du is going to be 1 over x dx. So we can find derivative of ln of x, but not antiderivative. Okay, so we got that part. And then, again, we have no choice. Okay, that's u, but, um, but to say that 1 is dv. Okay, so that's 1 dx. 1 dx. So, then what is v? Antiderivative of 1 is x, right? Okay, so we got all parts here. Let's continue. Um, so let's continue with the formula for the integration by parts method. It goes like this. Uh, we have to take u and multiply by v. So it starts uv, uv, that is x ln of x minus integral. Here we had u dv. That means that here we'll have to write v du. So we we'll reverse that. v du. v is x. And then du is 
1 over x dx. Okay, now as you can see, we cancel axis and now our integral becomes very easy to approach. So it's basically 1 dx. Oh, that's minus 1 dx. Well, let's finish this. x ln of x minus antiderivative of 1, we just did it here. This is x plus c. Okay, so that is our scratch work for uh, evaluating the right hand side. Now, once we're done, I'll write it down here to our, in our function x ln of x minus x plus c. So that is the general solution to the given differential equation. Now, before um, I look at the initial condition, I'm going to write it in explicit form. So I'm going to divide every term of that equation or of that function by x plus 1. Don't forget to divide constant as well, x plus 1. Okay, so the explicit form is y equals x ln of x over x plus 1 minus x over x plus 1 plus c over x plus 1. That is general solution. That represents family of functions. So c can take upon any number um, that creates infinitely many functions in this family. Um, however, we're given the initial condition. Let me remind you what it is. So initial condition. So out of all those functions in the family, we have to find one that satisfies this condition y of 1 equals 10. Or I can write like this. When x is 1, y equals 10. So to find a particular solution, particular function that satisfies this condition, I have to plug in 1 for x and 10 for y in this family uh, of function in the general solution. So let's see what we're going to end up with. So this is 10. And then basically all x's are 1's, right? Uh, let's write it 1 times the ln of 1 over 1 plus 1 minus 1 over 1 plus 1 plus c. And that's something we're looking for, right? We need to know what is the number, what's the number we need to use here so that we obtain a particular solution that satisfies this condition. So we're going to find it in, in a minute. 1 over uh, 1 uh, over one plus 1. That's what I should say. Okay, let's see. 10 equals... Now remember, logarithm of 1, no matter what base it is, is 0. So that is 0. Which means that this whole term is gone, right? Now, next one is 1 half minus uh, negative 1 half plus c over 2, like that. Okay, so to find c, I'm going to add 1 half to um, the right-hand side. So plus 1 half, like almost out of space here, plus 1 half, plus 1 half. And to make... Uh, it's easier, I'm going to think about 10 as 10 over 1 or 20 over 2, right? So that's 20 over 2. 20 over 2 plus 1 over 2, that's 21 over 2. So from here, I get 21 over 2 on the left and then C over 2 on the right. So obviously C has to be 21 for this equality to work. If you want to show steps, you can always multiply by 2 on each side. I will cancel the denominators and you can see how C is 21. So let's see, I'll put like that C equals 21. That's important discovery. That's actually the one we needed. And now I'm going to take that number and plug that into the general solution. And that will, out of that family of functions, family of implementing functions, I found, I specifically chose one. And that's the one that will have 21 over here. Um, that will satisfy this initial condition. So my final answer 
is the following function y equals x ln of x over x plus 1 minus x over x plus 1 plus 21 over x plus 1. So that is a particular solution that we're looking for. Maybe I'll add one more step. I think how all denominators are the same, so why not to combine them all together? So generally that's good enough, but I'll just combine them for like a different version of that answer. So x ln of x minus x plus 21, all that is over x plus 1. Here it is. This is called particular solution. General solution, particular solution. Particular solution is part of the general solution. It's one of the functions in the general solution. So one last note, particular solution should never have arbitrary constant c. You shouldn't see any c um, in the particular solution. So I hope these steps made sense and good luck in your studies.